All right, we're on page 103 of your lab manual and we're moving on to the male structures. We mentioned that the superficial dor dorsal vein empties into the external pudendal vein. By the way, in my lab manual, I've written for external pudendal vein, I wrote right above it that the superficial dorsal vein of the penis drains into it. And then when I went to the superficial dorsal vein, right above it, it says empties in the external pudendal. So right, even if they're both on the same page, continue to write it. So as you're going through, you're seeing it from all the different angles, right? Not only from the external pudendal vein angle, but also from the superficial dorsal vein, from this angle, from that angle. However, you can see it. The more you can see it, the more you'll be able to really remember it from every angle. Um, deep dorsal vein empties into the prosthetic plexus. The dorsal arteries of the penis supplies the glands penis. Um, the corpus spongiosum forms the glans penis and encloses the urethra. And the corpora cavernosa is anchored by the crura and it makes up the dorsalis, uh, the dorsal penis. And it's enclosed in this tunica albiginia, the suspensory ligament, fine. The insertion in, in nine it says, uh, follow the ischio cavernous distally, follow the ischio cavernosus distally and note its insertion. So its insertion is that it attaches to the ischial tuberosity and covers the crora and forces blood out to erect um, the penis and the clitoris. Right? So that's the function and its attachment. It attaches to the ischial tuberosity, it covers the crora, and it forces blood out to the erect penis or the clitoris. The, bulbous, the bulbospongiosis, it covers the bulb of the penis, it compresses bulbs to force blood distally, and it facilitates emptying of the urethra following urination. That'll make more sense to the male than the female, whatever. Um, reflex contraction during ejaculation, so it also forces stuff out, it's a reflex. Um, cool. Perennial body, it's continuity with the bulbospongiosis muscle. Identify the bulb of the penis. It's anchored to the perennial membrane, which we talked about earlier. Identify the two in 11. Observe that the artery enters the deep space. Identify the two terminal branches of the internal pudendal artery. It's going to be the inferior rectal. Um, there's actually three branches, but whatever. The inferior rectal, the perineal, and the deep artery and dorsal artery of the penis. Again, follow the deep artery of the penis to where it enters the crus of the penis. That concludes that page. And moving on to the female. What is to know? Okay, Ident attempt to identify, in, in 14 it says, I attempt to identify the greater vestibular gland. And the purpose of this, um, this gland is also called Bartholin's gland. Right? You have an, uh, one that's para-urethral, and those are Skene's glands. And then you have the greater vestibular gland, which is the bulbospongiosis. What did I just say? The greater vestibular gland is also going to known, be known as Bartholin's. Forget the bulbospongiosis. And its purpose is to secrete during sex um, into the superficial perennial pouch. So it provides that lubricant or else it would really hurt for the female. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what else? Now moving on to the structures of the perineum. Let's see what we haven't already said. Superficial perennial space. What does it have in it? It has the greater vestibular gland or Bartholin's gland. It's between the superficial fascia and the perineal membrane. Um, and it goes from the penis up to the abdomen.
pudendal canal so in the ischial anal space. Um, the medial, talking about the ischial anal fossa now, we have the medial wall, which is the levator ani. The lateral wall is the obturator internus, and the base is the perineal membrane. We talked about it earlier, and we said visualize it. Here we are repeating it and visualizing it again. Um, Buck's fascia. Here's how th this will, knowing your anatomy, knowing the position of anatomy, is going to help when you're identifying structures on A and P. So when we're talking about Buck's fascia, you're going to see uh, you're hopefully going to know what the superficial dorsal vein of the penis looks like, right? And if you know what the superficial dorsal vein of the penis looks like, and a picture comes up highlighting the fascia underneath the superficial dor dorsal vein, you know it's Buck's fascia, right? There's going to be fascia that covers the superficial dorsal vein. That's not going to be Buck's fascia, okay? Um... They highlight it in that like light green color I think they have. Just be able to know what the structures look like so that you can use it for your benefit. So if you see the superficial dorsal vein and they're highlighting that fascia right under it, you know it's Buck's fascia. Same with tunica albiginia. It wraps around the corpus cavernosus. So instead of it being like a, the corpus cavernosus being pinkish and they're showing the tunica albiginia, maybe I think it's still a light green structure know that it's it's deep um, to the Buck's fascia, right? So remember your structures and their relationships to one another to be able to help you understand them. Mm. I think that really covers everything. The clitoris is going to be the crus plus the corpus ca uh, cavernosus and glands clitoris. That's what it's going to be made up of the mons pubis is the anterior union of the labia majora an inferior aspect of the pubic symphysis mm. i think that's it the dorsal artery of the penis is more superficial than the deep artery that kind of makes sense there. And the urogenital diaphragm, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, this isn't one of, this is just extra information now, so you can take notes on page 105 where there's a bunch of empty space. Um, <clears throat> so the Buck's fascia, We'll come back to the urogenital diaphragm. Buck's fascia attaches to the pubic symphysis and the perineal membrane. And there's a great picture that uh, we can draw together if and when we meet up um, to kind of go through it, right? So if you're going from superficial, deep, you're going to have like the skin. Right under it is the scarpus fascia. And right under that is the Buck's fascia. Okay. And the scarpus fascia is continuous with the collie's fascia. So it goes like this. Above the penis, kind of like the lower part of your abdominal wall, is going to be scarpus fascia. Around the penis, continue scarpus fascia. I'll just stop using my finger clearly, it's ineffective. So scarpus fascia comes down around the penis. Around the testicles, it's the dartos fascia. And the dartos fascia continues as the collis fascia and the uh, perennial uh, membrane, kind of that part between the testicles and the anus, okay? We'll mention a couple other things in another video. Actually, let's try to fit it in really quick. The deep pouch is enclosed in the urogenital diaphragm. So the, when they talk about the deep pouch, it's enclosed in the urogenital diaphragm. And that includes the urethral sphincter, compressor urethrae, transverse perineus muscle, and the vessels and nerves that go to the penis. All right. The superficial space, again, um, it's going to be between the superficial fascia and the perennial membrane fluid can collect here. And in that space, you're going to have the greater vestibular gland, 
bulbous spongiosis, and other arteries. Okay? It's important to know what's in the superficial space versus the deep space, the deep pouch, just because they can ask that. That's something that they like to ask. Okay. Um, so a lot of things they like to ask is puncturing of the urethra at different spaces along its length, especially in the male. Um, so the, if the urethra is punctured, but buck's fascia is intact, the urine is going to accumulate in the buck's fascia. And when we draw this out, it's going to be contained kind of in around the penis, okay? If buck's fascia is broken, the urine could go up into the abdomen because it goes into the superficial space, all right? So just to know, think of when we draw it out, you're going to be able to see how if it's cut in the prostate, if it's cut uh, in the urogenital diaphragm, if it's cut in the penis, where the urine's gonna go, and they like to ask that. We can go through that again. Remind me to go through that with you, okay? If you can't figure it out yourself. Um, membranous urethra runs the urogenital diaphragm. That's all I had for pelvis from the lab manual. Um, I'm going to check my book to make sure that uh, I got most everything, but everything else should have really been covered uh, or should be self-explanatory. If not, we can go through the question. Let me know what questions you have and we'll discuss them in person. Good luck, you guys.